Guten Morgen! Ich bin James York and welcome to Cozy Languages. Tag 2, Lektion 2. And today we are going to continue. So this time I worked with the text that I listened to and worked with yesterday. And today I'm trying to focus on the grammatical part because as a teacher I know that grammar is very important. So it was a little bit complicated for me. Let's see what I learned so far today. So today I focused first of all Morgen, Tag, Abend, Nacht because I knew 100% that there are phrases like Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. And it will be Guten Morgen, Guten Tag, Guten Abend and Gute Nacht. And then I continued working with the same text. The yellow These are words that I've already discussed with you. Green, these are words that I didn't really understand. Why? What for do we use them? And let's start. Well, first of all, I've analyzed nouns like Türme, das Eis, uh, ein Feuer. Remember, yesterday I've learned that there are three genders. And these are Masculine articles der ein, feminine die eine, and neutral das ein. And I found that for plural there is only one different article and this is die. I've tried to find the singular and plural form of nouns and to, you know, to identify some rules of plural and singular in German. I started with the word Türme. And what I found that in singular der Türm, so it is masculine, and dir Türme. So we add letter E at the end in plural, dir Türme, and as well we change U in Turm for Türme. I was like, okay, well, quite easy for now. Then I analyzed the following word, das Eis, so we know that das, it is neuter, and das Eis will be the same in plural, die Eis. Next word, ein Feuer, fire. So, ein, do you remember that ein, it is either masculine or neuter, and actually fire, neuter. Das, feuer, and dir, feuer. No changes in plural. Only the article changes. Right? Aus. Alright, so, Türme aus rotem Gold. Here it was more or less complicated because I remembered that made of, well, I know Russian, And in Russian, there are cases. Actually, in German, there is a dative case. So, what you need to remember that the preposition aus is used only in dative case. So, if you see the preposition aus, it will be dative case. And rotem, red, actually, rotem, it is the form of dative case. So, your adjectives rotem is in dative case. And then I was wondering how many cases in German. And actually, there are four of them. So it is nominativus, accusativus, dative, and genitive cases. And I wanted to focus on a rotem as well. So if rotem it is dative case, there should be difference between nominative, accusative, dative, and genitive. And I started to analyze this, and I found that in nominative rotem, rote. In accusative, it will be roter. In dative, it will be roten. And in genitive, roter. So, in that particular case, we already can identify that roter in accusative and genitive is the same. And then, I continued working with the text, and I found dich and dir. I remember, actually, that dich and dir, it was translated as you. And I started to think, it may be the cases. And I found that do, remember, do, beast, you are, in nominative, in accusative, it will be dich, the fourth line, doch wer dich wirklich kennt, dative, it will be dir, the last line, in dir, so heiß, and the genitive, it will be dein or deine. So what is the difference between dein and deine? I have understood it as well, that dein, the first one used with either masculine or neuter, and deine, You use with feminine. So, do, you, changes due to the cases. Let's continue with the next one. 
aus, it is actually the dative case. And the last line, in dia so heis, the preposition in, in Russian, for instance, in, it is another case. And I was thinking, okay, what case it may be? And actually, in is used in either accusative or dative cases. But in that one, in dia so heis, we have dia, and we understand that it is in dia the dative case in that particular moment. And well as well, brand, burning. This is the verb brennen, to burn. Well, for me personally, it's naturally useful. Let's continue with the next part. In that part, I focus first of all on nouns as well. And what I've discovered. The glass, remember, glass, glasses, it is plural because in singular it will be das glass, so it is neuter, and die glass. So in that case, we see that in plural we add additional er, and as well our a letter changes to a with two little dots. I was like, okay, it is getting somewhere. And then the following word, das leben. I was thinking, okay, das, well, it may be neuter, and actually, yes, das leben, it is neuter, and in plural it will be die leben, so no changes in plural. And as well, leben, it is the verb to live, leben. So you can see on the right, leben, the first one. Let's continue with the following word, die want. So I was thinking, okay, die want, well, it may be either plural already or feminine. And actually, die want, it is singular, feminine, and in plural it will be die wende or die wante. So we add additional e once again, and our a changes to a with little dots. And what else do we have? Well, we have the word land. Russland ist ein schönes Land. Land, this word is neuter as well, das Land, so the land, and in plural to be die Länder. Same as die Lasse, we add a with little dots and er at the end. And the last word, it will be Zila, remember soul. Zila, it is feminine, die Zila, and in plural to be die Zilen. I was like, it is a little bit confusing with plural, for me personally. And der Teufel, well, I think it is masculine. Der Teufel. Here we have our preposition auf and an as well. Auf das Leben, to life. Auf dein Wohl, to your health. And the next line, wirf die Gläse and die Wand, so an, another preposition. And I found that both auf and an are used in accusative and dative. So I wanted to change table a little bit and I found that in, auf and an, all of them are used in both accusative and dative. By the way, I have little question marks. It means that I don't really understand what does it mean because Russland is ein schönes Land. I understand that ein schönes Land, it is actually a case, but what case exactly? I didn't really understand it. And the last part, Liebe schmeckt wie Kaviar, Mädchen sind zum Küssen da, komm wir tanzen auf dem Tisch, bis der Tisch zusammenbricht. So, first of all, Liebe. The word Liebe, there is a verb, Lieben, also presented on the right, to love. And Liebe, it is the word of feminine, die Liebe, and in plural to be die Lieben. And the word dem Tisch and der Tisch, well, I see der Tisch and I understand that it is masculine singular. And actually it is der Tisch and der Tische. So we add only E at the end. Then auf dem Tisch is der Tisch. And I was thinking, okay, well, what is the difference? Actually, dem, it is the article der, but in another case. And I've understood masculine different articles, they change. So in nominative it will be der. In accusative it will be den, in dative it will be dem, and in genitive it will be des. In that case, auf dem Tisch, we understand that concerning dem it is dative, and auf is used in dative case. And the last line, bis der Tisch zusammenbricht, in that case, I've analyzed the word bis, 
And actually, it is not a preposition, but is used only in accusative case. And zusammenbricht, so I've understood another thing in German, that long words usually, these are compound words that consist of two parts or three parts, four parts, I don't know, but for two parts, 100%, because zusammenbricht, so it was the word collapsed. And in that case, we have two words together. But I don't really understand the logic. I found the word zusammen, so it is together. But bricht, I didn't really understand. And it was quite difficult for me to find the logic in that case. In conclusion, what can I say concerning the grammatical rules? Well, if I go and take a look, first of all, it's singular and plural. That the letters U and letter A, they change. So der Turm, die Türme, die Wand, die Wände, das Glas, die Gläser, and das Land, die Länder. So this is the first thing that I noticed. In concerning the endings, I've understood. So if the word ends with a consonant, you will add E or either ER. If we will continue to analyze, I've understood that for masculine, and feminine, by the way, here should be feminine, not masculine, feminine. So for both, we add letter E, if we have the constant at the end in singular. And for neuter, we add ER. So this is the only thing that I've understood. And as well, if we have a vowel at the end, like die Zilla and die Liebe, we add just one letter N at the end. Die Zillen and die Lieben. Well, these are things that I've understood so far. So once again, if you're a German speaker, I want you to correct some points. And that's it. So tomorrow I'm going to take the second part of the song Moscow by Chinggis Han. And we'll see what we'll discover at the second part. And thank you very much. And by the way, I found that by it will be choose. So choose.